Hey guys, so today we're actually going to be learning how to code in Xcode. Now we're not going to be going over everything possible in coding, it's more of to keep the Swift specific. So today we're actually going to be making a quiz. Um, the reason for a quiz is a quick and easy to understand method that does use a decent amount of information that could be later used for other projects. So first thing we do is create a new Xcode project. Now for this one, a single view app. You may use the other ones later on, but for the most part, you usually just go into a single view app. If you don't see this, you may be in one of these other settings. So make sure to be in the iOS setting and click the single view app. Now you have your team, you have your organization name and your identifier. I keep this myself so I am still currently a student. So easiest way, put in the name, quiz plus, now a good hap to have is naming schemas. So a naming schema is like making sure classes and project level systems are all uppercase versus any like variables and all that are gonna be camel case. Now we're gonna create three file systems just to make it easier. And one is going to be for storyboards. And another file system is going, okay. Gotta make sure when you do this, you're creating into new groups. The next file system we're going to have is going to be controllers. Now this is for view controllers. And the final system is going to be called systems. You can call it whatever you want. And we're also gonna delete the view controller that we start with. We're just gonna move that to trash. Uh, make sure you move to trash, actually deletes. Let's get our storyboards inside of storyboards so we're no longer using and keep the stuff really, keep that out. So, got our storyboards in there. Well, first thing we're gonna do, just to get all your basic setups for this project, so once you have these set up, you will not be making any other um, files for this actual quiz. So just get these files set up. First thing we're gonna do is a new Coco Touch class file. Now these are the view controllers and anything else that is direct to user interaction. The switch files over here, we're gonna create a little bit, just a little bit later, are for the actual um, coding. Now they will use coding, but you should be using Swift files for all of your backend coding or any coding that's not direct off the controllers. And most of your code should actually not be in the controllers. Your control, you should get used to using your controllers to call coding systems. So we're gonna go to Coco Texture class. First thing we need is just the front page, how you enter your view and your quiz. So we create our front page controller. It slips in and now we need to make two more. Let's make another file. Now this next one is going to be called the quiz view controller. That's where most of the quizzing is gonna take place. Now let's make another new file, Coco Touch. And what is this going to be? Well, this is going to be end view controller. Now the reason we're saying end is just because that what it literally is. After you get done with the quiz, you tell them how they did. Front page is introducing to the quiz. Now we have to make systems. Now this is the backbone of the system. What's one thing we're going to need to do? Well, we'll need an overall running program. So for that, we go to the Swift file and we're going to make the quiz file, or quiz Swift. Now this is gonna be all the code to actually run the quiz class. But before that, but we need to set up how questions are held. We need questions themselves. Let's make a question that's Swift. And then for anything else that we may need, we can make a Swift file additional. Now this additional stuff was, is kind of for later, it would be like a user or something if and when we implement that. We are going to be doing this in an iterative process. We're going to get certain steps done first and then look into doing more. So we have the questions, but it's just import foundation. Well, what's going on? Well, we just have a new file. So what do we need to do? 
Well, a good thing to do is make the actual class. So class question. Next step, we have a class. What is that? It's something you can call and create and use to um, basically manage different data that you have set up. First thing we're going to do is going to make all the placeholders inside of the class. So what do we have? Well, we have the actual question. Make sure these are bars. And private that. So private var question. And make that a string. And then another private var answer. And another string. And we're going to keep on going, adding in these variables that we need. We have questions and answers. Well, what else do we need? Well, we need choices. We need to be able to choose in a quiz, or what type of quiz is it? Oh, we, well, it would be a fill in the blank quiz then. We're doing multiple choice. Private var choice three. String. Private var choice four. String. We have our four choices. We have our question, and we have our answer. Now you're probably asking what could possibly be next. Well, as you see up here, the quiz has no initializers. Currently, these are not set. Now one weird thing you can do, if I did that, that would technically set it. That's wrong for how we have it set up because we don't have an initializer to actually set up those values yet. So let's do it first. We have a note that we call, and for this one, what we're actually going to do is make it as a denotation that it was set up wrong. So, has this question been properly, properly set up? Uh, add that question mark. Well, the answer is going to equal no, take in the no. Now choice one for this one will then also equal the big N O. And then we're gonna use the programmer's favorite tool, command C and command V, to then set up the last two choices and have it. So you have four yeses. So if you see this, this means that the system is not currently working or just it didn't do what we thought it was going to do. It didn't initialize properly. Well then, how do we set this up? Well, since we have privates, we can't alter this outside of this class. And it's just to protect everyone and ourselves from just messing up stuff. So we need to have the initialer take in values. So we have to customize the initializer. Let's do it in it. And let's do a Q, make that a string, an ant which is going to be another string. And then C1, string C2, string C3, string, and then finally C4 shall be the last string. Now, what do we do with these? We need to set up our variables. So like how we have up there, we're gonna make question equal to Q, answer equal to ants, and then choice, one can equal to C1. Choice two is going to be equal to C2. Choice three is going to be equal to C3. And then choice four is going to be equal to C4. So we now have our initializer set up. And let's do a comment, which a comment, for you guys who don't know, is Denoting to the system, do not check these values. Anything inside of the comment is not seen as code. Now this, I guess, got set up there. Let's get that there. And initializer. Custom functions. And that's because we're going to go into the functions now. So what do we need to do with the question? 
Well, we need to do three things with the questions. One is to give the question, two is to check the answer, and three is to actually give all the choices. So let's start with the choices. How can we give the choices? So let's make it give choices. Well, we're not going to input anything. We don't need anything from outside of this class to do this. But we're going to return. Well, a handy dandy array, array of string would allow us to return every single one of these choices and keep them in order. That's what we're going to do. Well, we don't have an array set up. So how do we set up this array? Well, we're going to make a temp array. So we're going to we're going to do this quick and dirty method of making an array of type string equivalent to a blank array. Well, now we need to append stuff. And this, what we're doing right now, is actually adding items onto the array. And we do need to keep these in order. The temp that. Now there is another way to do this. And I'll show that in just a second. And then finally needed to return temp. Well, how else could we do this? Well, we could have just made this equal to each of the choices and then separated them out. Um, I just like this to show more of what's slowly happening and to give another option so people can understand at runtime how to append stuff. So what's next? We, we gave our choices. We got that solved. Well, we need to check the answer. How do we check the answer? Well, first let's make it so we can check the answer. Bam. And what are you, well, we need a string. We need a string for them. So I'm gonna make the input equal a string. Okay, what are we gonna return? Well, we're gonna return this thing called a Boolean. Now the Boolean itself is either true or false, zero or one, and it just denotes, like I said, if the object is true or false. And well, how do we get this? Well, we can check input, against our current answer and if they are and if they are equivalent return true else we return false now you probably if you guys aren't used to this you might be questioning what's the difference between this equal and this equal and one is an equivalence check and the other one is kind of setting the value. So this is setting question to Q. And this is saying, is input equivalent to answer? And this itself actually returns the Boolean. This is set up now for quicker coders to understand who have done this for a bit more, they would probably do something like that. And this is perfectly valid. So the reason saying never be executed is because we either return true or false based on this right now, but so this does the same exact thing as this, but I feel like this for people who haven't been coding for a long time is a little bit easier to learn to start with is seeing the both options. So you really get to see that it's two different paths coming down. Let's move on to our last thing is we need to get back the question. Well, can't they just grab it? Well, no, because we set it to private. So we can't just grab it from outside the class. We have to give it back to them. The function, give, question. We don't want anything from them, but they want something from us. So we are going to give them that string. Okay, so we're giving them that question. What next? Well, this is a very simple answer. You just give them the question, return the question. Now this itself is actually a norm of very, very frequently used function and almost a filler function that's used for most classes that are using these private type variables because we're using the privates. So 
that is all for the uh, questions. Um, when we come back, we'll be moving on to the quiz. And after that, we'll be moving on to the controllers. So, see you then, guys.